Hey everyone, I'm Barkley. Today I'm bringing you a Great Axe Warhammer PvP build guide. This will include your stats, your armor, your armor perks, weapon perks, gems, and masteries. It'll be everything you need to know to become a very aggressive, tanky, and disruptive player in wars, in outpost rush, and in open world PvP. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into it. First, I want to talk about your attribute distribution. You have two options, 209 strength and 201 con, or 249 and 160. The goal of both of these is to get to 300 strength and 200 con, but a lot of people haven't got close to that yet. The first build is more flexible with the stat food you'd like to eat. For the second build, I eat 40 con food for the 200 con perk. I'm avoiding going over 249 strength until I can reach 300 because it's bugged and gives you longer animations. It doesn't feel worth it until you can get the grit on all attacks. With your armor weight, you have another preference pick. You can go either medium or heavy. For medium, you want to get 22.9 equipped weight. You're going to need heavy chest, light legs, and any combination of two medium and one heavy with the rest. Helmet, gloves, and boots wear the same, so that's however you want to do it, for fashion reasons. Now moving into armor perks, first off, Resilient has been fixed. It's no longer reducing all damage taken, but it's still a really good pick. So faction armor is a great place to start. But after that, you may want to start balancing offensive perks with defensive until you can get pieces with both. The main offensive perks to look out for are Sundering Shockwave, Insatiable Gravity Well, and Crippling Reap. You want to try to keep three to four resilient pieces and pick up two of the three offensive perks. Getting a piece of gear with resilient and skill perk is possible, but it's a very low chance. Sundering Shockwave and Insatiable Gravity Well have great synergy in war, but they're very competitive when used alone. Sundering Shockwave gives you an AoE 10 second rend, and Insatiable Gravity Well gives you a second burst when people stay in your gravity well long enough to get hit, which isn't hard to pull off in group PvP. For weapon perk options, you have Keen Enchanted, Keenly Empowered, Mortal Empowered, Keenly Fortified, Mortal Fortification, and any of the offensive perks from before. Any combination of these are good, so faction weapons are a good starting point. I didn't swap off of my faction weapons until around 540 to 550 gear score. The accessories for this build are easy to come by. For amulet perks, you'll want to get healthy, divine, and empowered or fortified. Lucky for us, we have all of those present in the Infinity Crystal. This comes from a quest in Shatter Mountain and will be best in slot until you can get the same with a gem slot. For earrings, I'm looking for refreshing toast, refreshing, and nimble or regenerating. Ill-gotten gains gives you two of these, and it's a farmable drop from Foreman Herald and Eating Grove. For your ring, you're looking for keen awareness, hardy, and refreshing or slash damage. The ring I'm running is Beginning that drops from Siren's Fist and Reek Water. Hardy gives you the ability to do three dodges in a row instead of two while wearing heavy armor. Now for armor gems, I think it's a case by case based on what you see on your server. But right now my default pick is Opal because I feel like more people are switching to mage builds. That might just be my server though. My other options would be going with a balanced gem like Malachite or Diamond. For weapons, I've been using Opal for damage while you aren't full stamina, but Aquamarine while playing consistently with Ice Gauntlet users is a viable option. If you go the Aquamarine route, it opens up the option to using ice damage increase on your ring too. Now let's take a look at your masteries and your abilities. For Great Axe, your abilities will be Charge, Reap, and Gravity Well. Charge is one of the more versatile abilities in the game. You can use it to escape, engage, and as an auto attack animation cancel. To do this, you would charge after your second light attack for some quick burst. Reap is the generic pull ability. It can also be used in the same way as charge to animation cancel. The third use will be to interrupt long obvious abilities like Burnout or Incinerate. Gravity Well is an AoE CC ability that does damage, which is best used after people use up their stamina or their gap closers. It can set up AoE kill scenarios and wars. It's easily one of the best abilities in the game. My masteries for Great Axe are pretty straightforward. Taking a look at the Reaper side, I didn't put a point on the spin attack on Reap because I don't like the animation of it. It feels slow, clunky, and inconsistent. I didn't get the passes for charge because in wars, I'm usually saving it for Gravity Wells. And you want Bloodlust, of course. It provides too much pressure whenever you're trying to get into back lines. Now taking a look into the Mauler tree, you avoid heavy pull and gravity because they're bugged. Heavy pull makes you do less damage on heavy attacks, and gravity for whatever reason makes your reap really inconsistent. A must-have pick is enduring strikes for damage resistance and grit on heavy attacks. Everything else just makes you a monster whenever you get in the thick of it and back lines are on point. For my Warhammer abilities, I picked Shockwave, Path of Destiny, and Wrecking Ball. While the Great Axe is your bread and butter of the build, the Warhammer is there just to throw AoE CC at people, then quickly swap back to Great Axe when you can. Shockwave is there for the stun and the sunder if you get the perk. Path of Destiny for the longer range stagger. You can use this to catch people who are running away who aren't in melee range, or just to throw AoE CC. I see people using this like it's not a ranged ability, don't be like them. And Wrecking Ball for more AoE CC and the Fortify. 
You can pick clear out instead of wrecking ball. Wrecking ball is to hold them in place and clear out is for knocking them off point. Pick whichever fits you best. For passives in the crowd crusher tree, your goal is to get better at dropping AOE CC. The ultimate gives you a 20% slow on shockwave and path of destiny. In juggernaut, you get the bigger AOE and fortify on wrecking ball and everything else goes into landing bigger heavy attacks in situations that you can. Since you have grit and damage reduction on both weapons with heavy attacks, I tend to use them when people are clumped up for offense and defense. That 20% damage reduction goes a long way. At the end of the day, the goal of this build is to pressure backlines and be disruptive on point. You do your best damage by weaving light attacks, dodges, and heavy attacks together. You will use your abilities to set up kills for others with AOE CC abilities or to stay on target better. As long as you don't overextend too far and position well, you're very hard to kill, and you still have the ability to solo kill people. If you have any questions about the build, or any ideas for me to improve on these videos, let me know down below in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.